next up stories. The high youth unemployment rate is a common factor in all European countries, plus the consequent increase on the compromise by youngsters on zero-hour contracts and those that offer limited rights and job security. This issue will be tackled by the European Employment Strategy included in the 2020 objectives. Here to comment on the current situation of youth unemployment is Emma Ruano. Good morning, Maria. Emma Ruano here speaking. So, today I'm going to be showing you a couple of facts and figures about youth unemployment in the EU. First of all, did you know that youth unemployment is so high it has actually doubled normal unemployment? It all began with the current crisis back in 2008, when youth unemployment reached a 15.1%, increasing to 23.6% in 2030. As for 2014, I have here a couple of figures to show you. As you can see, Spain is at the top of the chart with a 53.3% of youth unemployment, followed by Greece with a 49.8%. At the bottom of the chart, we can find Austria with an 8.9% and Germany last with 7.4%. As for the figures in the middle, we can find the average of youth unemployment in the Eurozone with a 23.7% and the average in the EU with a 21.9%. That is all for now. Thanks a lot, Maria. Going back to you. Thank you, Emma. Another news. The increase of successionist movements in specific regions of the EU territory, such as Catalonia, Scotland or Flanders, is by all of us known. But what is the EU's approach on this issue? Well, it turns out we're still walking towards a legal framework on this matter. Alicia, why is this legal framework so important now more than ever? Well, as you said, we all know about the secessionist movement in Catalonia, Scotland or Flanders, but did you know that there are so many other European territories which also want to get independent from their respective countries, such as South Tyrol in Italy, or Corsica in France, Bavaria in Germany, or Wales, Cornwall and Northern Ireland in the UK, also Silesia in Poland and Ireland in Finland. As we can see, the, the number of regions who want to get independent is growing. The EU should really start to think about how to deal with this, and we trust the AFCO2 committee to establish a legal, uh, the legal framework that is so needed. Thank you. Back to you, Maria. Thank you, Alicia. STEM studies, science, technology, engineering and mathematics are progressively being abandoned by humanities and social studies. Law, MBA and economics are the degrees of this kind that are most chosen by Spanish students. Here, to comment on the current situation of education of young Europeans is Blanca Domingue. Well, Maria, STEM studies are being kept aside. Young students focus in humanities and social studies, although the labor market's technological demand is increasing day by day. Companies are looking for fresh new ideas concerning the STEM field, but more than half of the students choose degrees that are not related to innovation nor technology. The STEM world is not only threatened by this lack of interest, but also the insufficient communication between enterprises and universities, which gives students an unrealistic point of view towards what enterprises expect from them. Surveys show that more than 57% of the European companies believe that in many cases what is taught in university has weak contents. Moreover, women are being discriminated. Only 30% of them represents a part of the entire technological sector. The European Union has launched many initiatives such as the Schoolnet Academy or the Scientix, but obviously results are weak and useless. So, what's the Committee on Culture and Education going to do? Should they focus on the core of the problem? Is it a problem related to the primary school, high school, universities, companies? Or is it a problem of coordination between the European Union and its state members' educational system? Thank you for that, Blanca. On other news, security and transport. Wait! Oh, breaking news! I'm being told that the head organizers are freaking out and apparently are too stressed out to function. Well, we hope their mental breakdown doesn't last for too long and they soon recover. Well, moving on, <laughs> security and transparency, two sides of the same coin. 
As we all know, intelligence agencies in many countries are gathering information about their citizens through phone and internet servers. Due to the magnitude of last year's American NSA scandal, most countries have realized that their private information may not be 100% safe. So Alicia, what new strategies are countries now considering? Hi Maria, countries do have to protect their data. But could you guess the solution that the US and the UK have come up with in order to prevent cyber attacks? This solution is cyber attacking each other. Yes, in order to test the security measures they have, the US is going to attack major London bank banks, while the UK attacks Wall Street. So, the war games, as they are called, are just a simulation. But in David Cameron's words, just as we have worked with our closest ally, the US, to protect our people and our countries from traditional threats, so we must work together to defend ourselves from the new threats like cyber attacks. This is about pooling our efforts so we stay one step ahead of those who seek to attack us. So, does this mean that we're finally going to have security measures which do protect our data? And can the Libre, can the Libre Committee come up with better ideas? And now, a few commercials from our sponsors. But stick around and we'll be right back. <laughs> hey guys, have you tried Fuet? Pirineo. This one is so cool. Oh my god, I can see the light through it. It's so well cut. And it tastes also well. <laughs> Longaniza Extra Pirineo. Board approved. Another news. Regarding the democratic deficit observed during the last European elections, the Committee on Constitutional Affairs 1 will try to find solutions to the lack of citizen participation on European institutions. Here to send them his support, Mr. Martin Schulz. President of the European Parliament. Hello, Martin Schutz here speaking, President of the European Parliament. Democratic deficit has become a major problem nowadays in the EU. People do not trust the governing bodies and thus Euroscepticism is increasing. People do not vote. AFCO 1, we need you to ensure the democratic legitimacy of the governing bodies and thus increase participation of the European citizens, especially youngsters. AFCO 1, we trust you. Europe, we need your vote. Thank you. The first European Defence Summit in five years was held in Brussels in December 2013 as a result of the conflicts caused by unilateral actions taken by France on the Central African Republic. How will SEDE ensure the complementation of the common security and defence policy whilst um, enhancing the collaboration between member states in these times of economic crisis? Here, analyzing this, is Blanca. Well, Maria, after the recent difficulties at the European Union borders, the member states are beginning to realize that the limited progress in military capability and the lack of a proper defense cooperation represent a real threat to European security. The economic crisis has been the center of the European Union budget and the issue of defence cooperation has been absent at the European Union summit since 2008. The main problem in order to achieve more defence cooperation seems to be that the big three, France, UK and Germany, are determined to maintain national control among their own security policies. There is neither agreement among the European leaders about the indispensability of the European Union military force, because some of them propitiate cooperation within the NATO. In front of this lack of compenetration and a strong leadership, there is a risk that the common security and defense policies development standards. Moreover, the United Kingdom, which is the second highest contributor to the European Union security and defense budget, is trying to abandon the European Defense Agency. How is the Committee on Security and Defense going to cope with, the, with this chaotic security and defense situation. Back to you, Maria. Now we're heading to another news and, well, okay, breaking news again. Yes, I'm being told that apparently the HOs have been chilling for a while and are much more relaxed now. Seems that they are right back on track. Good job, girls. And that's all for today. We wish you the best of luck for the General Assembly now. And remember to tweet with our official hashtag GironaRS2015. I'm Alicia Carneros, Blanca Dominguez, Maria Gil, and Maruano. And this has been Girona Updates.